love it when I turn off the bass. Welcome into the Ada Boys. Breaking news came in last night on Charles Hoskinson, Elon Musk, the ranch in Wyoming. We're going to get into that. Some very bullish indicators uh, for the crypto markets. Will Cardano be along for the ride in crypto's next big leg up, or will user adoption be a problem? We'll look at that, Fudster. Uh, but welcome into the Ada Boys. I'm Gavin Dawson. We're uh, and 100 miles south is my main man, Tex. Every day on this channel, we come together to talk about things we like in crypto, mostly on Cardano. How the hell are you doing today, buddy? Oh, man. Busier than a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. Gee, kids are back to school today. I uh, got the day job, but swamped. And uh, hey, man, the market looks uh, interesting, to say the least. We got Rare Evo coming up here in a couple of days, dude. So I'm fucking pumped. Yes. I'm super pumped right now for what I think is about to happen. Short and medium range, very bullish, is a great place to be to start a show, especially with Rare Evo getting underway. And, of course, we're going to be touching down in Las Vegas Friday morning, ready to cover this as best as possible. So many of the biggest names in Cardano congregating in Vegas, uh, basically now through Sunday. We'll take a look at what the latest buzz is for you all week long. But first off, the one of the biggest reasons I'm absolutely pumped right now, Tex, I think I'm sharing the wrong one. It's funding rates, uh, extremely negative. Once again, a big short squeeze inevitable. This is a Mr. Crypto right here. I mean, uh, but basically what this means, leverage traders are net shorting the market and it creates liquidations and stop losses being triggered whenever um, you know you get a, a big candle to the upside. There's this cascading effect. That's how the short squeeze most often happens, and it can only really happen when funding is negative. For some reason, people are looking at these prices and deciding this is a great time to uh, short the market. I would be personally terrified to do that, but it's awesome that they are because it's it's kindling and, and lumber for a big old fire that's about to rage, Tex. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, dude, they're about to actually get smoked. Let's sell and short when the Black Rocks, the Fidelities, the Stanleys are all aping in and buying more. This is sound financial advice, not yeah. RIP to them. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no doubt, dude. I I, I love it. I'm gonna be uh, drinking uh, uh, goblets of their tears. And That's then the right. uh, the the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, came out slightly lo lower than expected. Um, you know, it was, it was about right on 2.9 compared to three with the U.S. CPI, and then the core CPI was right on the estimation of 3.2 percent. So they're saying it pretty much locks in a rate cut for September. Chances of that are over 90 percent right now, and you know we should have a a, a pump in the maybe weeks or a month or so after that a process gets underway so q4 is looking damn amazing broski yes sir can't come soon enough okay uh speculation running rampant after this tweet from elon uh that he was doing the space from his friend's ranch in wyoming and and charles got things going with the nice ranch like the woodwork the person has good taste there was a fun what would you say 24 hours or so of people speculating there were entire news stories about it i love it uh but i woke up to this uh tweet from charles that you had uh, texted me last night that uh, it was yeah. just in good fun and he was actually at, at, at peter peter thiel's place yeah i think that's the paypal founder yeah the name rings a bell um it's interesting though dude like the the blockchain detectives are just either A, just so very, very talented with limited resources, or B, they just have an incredible amount of time on their hands. Because there's a comparison picture I saw on Twitter where, oh, they have found the property that was listed under an entity that Charles owned, and they circled like four parts of the picture that were absolutely the same. Like it was the same room. You cannot argue it. Um, but evidently the entity information and the part of that story was absolute bullshit because Charles came out and and uh, and clarify the equation there's there's still five percent of me and g that wonders is charles is trolling us with that tweet and he's just trying to keep the uh uh the cat in the bag if you will as long as possible so there's just five percent of me maybe that's the moon boy in me but it's still a thought floating around in my head it'll be a legendary play if that's the case it, it would be so epic if it came out that you know <laughs> Elon has looked into it, loves the tech of Cardano, and wants to integrate it uh, with his X crypto integrations in the future. You know, I that's just the stuff that absolute dreams are made of. So we can have our fun and hope and 
in wonder. Okay, uh, not sure if you saw this story. Bitcoinist.com responsible for the FUD. Cardano adoption has stagnated. Analytics firm uh, talks why. And there's a number of takeaways, uh, you know, in this. They say, as is visible in the graph here, Cardano had enjoyed notable growth in its holder base during the uh, 21 bull run, but the metrics increase uh, slowed during 2022 bear and then completely hit a plateau in the last year. This would suggest that while the crypto had been gaining significant adoption in the last bull run, new investors are no longer finding the network worthwhile. Uh, into the block notes that I don't know if you got to phrase it like that, guys, but uh, they note that the the growth during the previous cycle had come as ADA was positioned as a strong alternative to Ethereum. But these days, investors are instead being attracted to other networks like Solana and Base. They do note uh, some positives. The network has seen a stable trend in, upward in daily active addresses since April. But you know, I thought this was a you know a fair point to talk about i didn't like the way they phrase some of the things um but you know that's what the media is going to do be a little dramatic i think people are attracted to pumps text and we aren't getting one in cardano you know it'd be it would have been interesting if we would have followed that uptrend past 80 cents to a dollar two dollars you know what this would look like right now i think it's going to be really difficult to attract new users because the new users want the new shiny objects uh, in, in crypto. And, and, you know, Cardano is kind of an old one now. They're from the generation of Uniswap and Chainlink and, and HBAR. And I think growth is, you know, already happened. And now it's one of the more established. But the more established you become, the less risky you are, the less, you know, shiny of an object you are for, for new crypto uh, adoption. I, I do think, though, for Cardano, the big difference is they're about to bring state-of-the-art innovation into blockchain technology and that has a chance to make it significantly better than ethereum speaking of peter thiel he, he wrote a book called zero to one and said if you want to disrupt you got to be 10 times better than what you're trying to take down i think that's possible with um you know a lot of the innovations that are coming here with the ching hard fork and govern it some things that ethereum is just not going to be able to do or cardano is going to do better and that's where you know charles hoskinson starts talking about uh, you know, partner chains and and things like this. But, you know, I, I think for the short to medium term, stories like this are a legitimate price concern at this point in the uh, in the trajectory of, of this particular bull market there, Tex. What do you think? No, I would I would agree with you, G. Um, you know, investors are instead being attracted by other networks like Solana and Base. Interesting word choice. I would say DGENs like opportunities to thousand X versus one to two X. You know, you look at the daily, the new users that are coming into Solana and base, these are not boomers that are coming in to make sound investments. These are DGEN gamblers like us. Uh, and, and a lot of them very, very much younger than us, G like half our age that are going in to play the, the meme coin uh, roulette extravaganza that is Solana and base. I saw something re uh, recently that said like the average um, life expectancy of a new project on pump dot fun on soul is literally 15 minutes. Uh, so yeah, yeah the, the shiny objects, uh, your words attracted to pumps. That's absolutely the case. The, the game changer for Cardano is it's the innovation, man. It's the technology. It's the real world use case and implementation. And once we see real world global business adoption come to Cardano, then you're going to see the sound investors, if you will, that dominate the financial world uh, come in. The media narrative shifts. And, and then I think that's when we see our real upside. And I think it starts with the fork, the unlocking of the treasury. I think there's going to be a lot of money. The community sees that the biggest area of opportunity for growth in Cardano is on the lack of marketing. Uh, to drive that and get the message out. So we're, we're a slow mover. It is what it is. But I can't, I can't go away from the fact of this fundamentally. We did what we did on the last run with a white paper project. A in theory, this is what we're going to do. Well, this is not in theory in, anymore. This is inarguable on chain, winning award after award after award on the technology, on the security, on the governments, on the innovation. The list goes on. So. Our yeah. time will come. It's just short term. We get wins like we got last night on Raw, right? 500% gain last night on Solana. Shout out to Pinky for that play. Oh, buddy. Um, it's just short term. That is where it is, and it's, it's hard to argue.
Yeah, and I, and I think the you know that's a good segue into the idea of this Chang hard fork. You know, and and hard forks historically have been massively bullish for Cardano. You're talking about fifty percent pumps, three hundred percent pumps, somewhere in that range historically with Cardano and, and and hard fork. So this is a big opportunity. What if Ada doesn't pump on the back of this at some point in the next? let's call it 12 months, you know, let's call it a year through spring of, of 2025. That's going to be almost to the end of the bull market. If the, the four year cycle holds, I, I, it's an interesting idea. You know, maybe you, maybe you, you know, explore Cardano native tokens, or maybe you just commit to DCAing more. You're like, okay, if, if, if it is not going over a dollar, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to double down on my conviction that this is a great long-term play because, you know, if you believe in blockchain, you, you, I think an objective analysis would determine that Cardano is your best play. Let's finish with some good news here, though. Um, they, they, they do include some some good uh, metrics here. Cardano has been processing a high daily volume of $7.2 billion recently, which is more than many other networks. I mean, we're really on fire with this and the developer activity. Plus, it would appear hodling conviction has been on the rise among Cardano investors with nearly 40% of the supply remaining dormant for a year or more um and uh you know here we here we are about uh, 33 cents right now so that's uh some of the good news now let's go to something even more bullish um nick valdez of the discover crypto channel i like this guy's content this is bitboy's old channel between him and dz they are doing some really good work on like big youtube crypto accounts for cardano so salute to those boys cold beers coming up valdez cited that ada has formed a bullish chart pattern known as uh the breaker block and it's on the verge of a stark stochastic rsi crossover if you you look on the chart you could see the stock rsi it, it it's it's looking so badass right now you know we're, mm. we're we're just cooking not overcooked but over 60 is nice i mean this is badass it is so primed for a, a big green candle maybe to you know rechallenge that 45 cents or so but um this is good the breaker block is basically a bullish retest where it looks like bears would be dumping again based on you know previous price action but they lose to the bulls who buy it up and then we closed above that zone with this green candle right here and so this could be a a serious turning point is what the breaker block theory basically says there so nick's looking at possibly a 13x from here to five bucks dude how awesome would that be come on come on the thought of that I, at the end of the day g it's not if for ada it's when yeah yes absolutely i'm right there with you brother okay what's going on in bitcoin land yeah man we got um bitcoin exchanges to a new low may signal a major price spike yahoo finance brings a story historic lows on exchanges ultimately folks the btc dip uh, the very uh, short-term dip under 50K got absolutely demolished on the way to a $60,000 recovery in what was a pretty short time frame hanging around in those ranges now. So what they say is what I've heard a lot of recently, there is a supply shock, shock incoming. We also talked about uh, the big institutions, the smart money, if you will, pumping their bags after the recent dip as well, adding to their bags, excuse me. And then we also had some... Um, some Mount Gox movement, G, um, okay. holding about two billion. Uh, they started sending test transactions according to data from Arkham. So the wallet that received two billion from Mount Gox initiated a test transaction on Tuesday. They said the wallet likely belongs to the crypto custody platform BitGo, which is one of four platforms that's in charge of allocation of these funds. And there's some chatter on Reddit, granted unverified claims, but uh, chatter that there's been Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash um, being received by some of these users. Uh, they currently hold 46,000 Bitcoin. This is Mt. Gox down from 141,000 Bitcoin on July 1st. So uh, it's interesting to see some movement. I don't know what the implications are for this, you know, for this, whether it's going to be good or bad. I think the institutional buying of bitcoin from the big boys could offset uh you know i think the dumping that will occur as a lot of these users receive uh their their long dude funds but the optimistic 
Um, you know, Moonboy and me says maybe a lot of these users have been around for a while. They know the asset that they hold, the value, and just because they're going to receive it doesn't mean they're going to dump it. Yeah. Um, now it's not the time so, to dump. I, you know, I think no. for sure some people will. You know, some people have been yes. have been waiting for the day to do that and you know realize generational wealth. Um, but I, I think the 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 behavior of uh the big etf funds has you know more than neutralized it and they've eaten so much selling like you get under 60 and they're just waiting for the right opportunity to pounce and and eat all that up and whales continue to accumulate and absolutely crush the minnows retail out here who's you know selling bags as wall street's accumulating uh and i feel bad for those people because while they're getting wealthy now they're really fading an insane opportunity these next you know, nine to 12 months could be, um, you know, exceptional. And it, it might be the last massive, massive run that you get from uh, Bitcoin because of just how much it's becoming worth. Eventually, it's going to slow down and move like a dinosaur. Yeah. Okay. I, I agree. Okay. Uh, sorry to cut you off there, Brosif. Um, good, man. But I, I wanted to get to this uh, story. You keep hearing about playing Doom on Cardano through Hydra. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be at Rare Evo. Why is this such a big deal? Uh, this dude, uh, Cardano Yoda, Yarmir Tazar, spelled it out for us. Okay. Uh, how many transactions will Hydra process when people play Doom? One transaction is sent in each fr frame. Doom plays at 35 frames per second, 126,000 transactions per hour of play. If people can keep playing 10 games in parallel for 24 hours, that will be about 300 million transactions. So it's just flexing the upgrades coming to Cardano and the scalability. You know, obviously you need to be able to do that with an entire globe using yours as a bank and an entertainment platform and everything. But this is just so massive considering where the blockchain was just a couple of years ago in the early days of NFTs and smart contracts and trying to get things done, they can pull this off, dude. I think it's going to be massively bullish. And maybe, you know, we can start talking about Cardano as one of the fastest blockchains, which has pretty much been Solana's only selling point for their entire existence. And they bring something called <coughs> security <coughs> and reliability that, um, that, that that other chain does not bring. This is why you see registration of vehicle in California going to ADA. There's tremendous chatter on it being implemented and tested with voting and transparent voting and the fuckery that has been our broken voting system. So again, man, the technology is real. It cannot be argued. Our time will come, everybody. Yeah. Man, the voting system needs to be on some blockchain or another. You know, it it has been it's been crooked since the, the beginning of the nation and and maybe uh worse even worse in recent years. Okay, on tap tools uh, who's killing it? You do have Sky. That layer two is up another 15% today. Wait, call it 20% now. Salute to you guys. Uh, congrats to the Omen team with the Omni token. Viva Nemo salute uh, up 20% going into Rare Evo. That's got to feel pretty dang good. I guess it's uh, Mogi up 13%. Congrats. RFK is up uh, 50%. That's a new one. Ranch. Uh, I guess playing mm -hmm. off of the whole ranch idea, that thing's up 56% uh, on the day as well. So it looks like people are having some fun. It's not a it's not a big day in the markets though. A lot of a lot of flat. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd expect more of a pump here with uh, this economy news that we've gotten the last two days. But hey, Trump's had a nice recovery after the dump. You know, I had a big run up uh, to the uh, the X space with uh, he and Elon, and then the uh, paper hands and the Cardano Jeets did what they do. It's up 40 percent. Uh, in the last 24 hours, there's a new shit coin called Elon that's up 300%. It looks like it's maybe only two hours old with a 6,008 market cap. So proceed with proceed with caution there, folks. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it I, it's insane right now to be trying to make any meme coin plays. But I think there are some definite narratives that you can feel better about. Like the political thing is so hot right now. Like mm -hmm. maybe dabble a, a, a little bit in there. Um but I think it's a great opportunity right now to invest in the quality meme coins, the meme coins with great teams with good history. And uh, snack, those all the time. baby snack, friend, Mogi. If you're looking for four to throw your money in what I would say would be relatively safe place for a meme coin, incredibly safe for a meme coin. Again, it's not financial advice, but that's where I'm BCANG. Same, snack, baby snack, friend, Mogi. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a current rush more of uh, Cardano meme coins. And... At least three out of those have 
criminally low market caps right now. You talk about an, an opportunity to accumulate and, and quality behind them. Okay. Um, other crypto news, ETH L1's average gas price keeps hitting new multi-year lows. Ethereum scaling efforts are paying off. It's insane how cheap ETH transactions are now. You can get them under a buck sometimes. Uh, I, want to, I want to be happy for him, but I have such anger and hatred for the amount of money I spent on gas on the last run. So happy for you, ETH users, but fuck you also. Not you, G, because I know you got a little on ETH. But <laughs> get yeah. better, get, get, get better, not bitter, one of my mentors said. Well, I'm still bitter when it comes to the amount of gas I spent. Yeah, you know, I I I I think it's a really interesting deal. You know, it's allowing them to scale and it's eliminated their biggest problem. But on the other side of that, now here's where you can get happy techs, the ETH uh, stakers that are trying to get passive income off this. They are, you know, not hitting the big time anymore because mm -hmm. these fees are their money and they're they're down bad like 98 percent in fee revenue <laughs> it's it's almost like every action has an equal and opposite reaction as somebody <laughs> who i think was pretty sharp said at some point uh in our history so r.i.p to them <laughs> injective and ton coin reached a partnership tons another one of these new shiny objects it's the it's the coin of uh, telegram which is bringing all sorts of sweet integrations into crypto through the telegram app directly you know, we use it in Cardano with the Snack uh, Snack X app, don't we? Yeah, yeah. That's so we you know buy new meme coins, but there's also there's there's like crypto casinos in there. There's all kinds of crazy stuff, and it's like you know we talk about what's going to happen if X could integrate with crypto or Discord or any, or Facebook or something like that. It's already happening in Telegram, and um, you know, I think it's a place to consider allocating a little bit of your bag because. That kind of separates itself. It makes it very unique. Absolutely. Hard to argue uh, the use case there, the amount of users. That's absolutely huge and how pivotal it is uh, as a part of the equation of these projects. Okay. Uh, so maybe that's why they're one of the few projects in the top 100 up today, up 10%. Uh, salute to ton coin mantles up five percent ave is up eight and a half percent can't wait to get to rare evo <clears throat> on friday charles hoskinson i believe posting this from maybe a vegas steakhouse last night or something like that are y'all ready for rare evo i don't know uh the thing i love about this picture though i don't know if he just packs bad or he just bought this shirt new and pulled it out of one of those like cellophane wrappers but it's got all the creases from it like it's brand new Thank still you, charles Jesus Christ, dude! You could, I mean, nerds be nerding, dude. I don't, I don't know what else, to, what else to say. I mean, he, I guess he just doesn't give enough of a fuck to have stylists and stuff like that. You know, he has enough money. He is who he is. I guess respect for that aspect of it. But you know, if you're gonna wear a horrifically bad shirt like that, Charles, at least get you one of those steamers, dude. They're like twenty five bucks, and they work like a charm. Right. For God's yeah, sakes. In most hotel rooms, I assume he's staying in a beautiful suite. They have an iron in there, but he's just such a nerd, dude. And I, I love it. I, I actually think the shirt is freaking sweet. Now, maybe I'm a nerd too. You know, well, I, we all got some nerd. I'm just, I'm more of a dog guy than a cat guy. Last time I checked, black cats are not good omens. Uh, and I want to see the, the, the founder of the project that has is my biggest bag with a not black cat on it. But again, that's just my own personal stupid uh, superstitions. Oh, well, I hope we could get a second with Charles or a, a, a few minutes. Uh, we'll be at Rare Evo on Friday. If you're going to be there, please say hi. If you have a project and you want to be interviewed, Tex and I are going to be on the floor, you know, doing tours and looking to catch up with folks. So back tomorrow with more crypto stories and Cardano headlines. And until then, shoot your boy. Shoot your boy.